I frequently mention how Beyond Tells is the largest and most extensive study of poker players ever conducted. And what I really want to do is show you how we went about it and explain one of the key aspects of this study, which is something called behavioral coding, and explain how we did it and why it matters. So basically, at the poker table, there is all of this movement. The whole purpose of Beyond Tells is to determine if this movement actually means something. In order to really understand if movement means something, you need to come up with methods for the consistent and accurate measurement of human behavior. In order to do this, we use a mixture of quantitative and qualitative methods, which can really be summed up using three methods for coding, frequency, duration, and style. I'm going to go over each and then explain how they work together to create very accurate descriptions of behavior at the table. Frequency refers to how many times something happens. So how often a player checks their cards, blinks, words spoken, chip playing, essentially anything that could be counted. Now this may sound pretty simple, but it's not because not everything is so neatly defined. For example, counting blink rates is quite simple. We can define a blink rate as when the eye opens and closes in less than one second. Then we just count all the times a player does this. It's crazy, but we actually did this. And I think we're over 65,000 blinks right now. Duration is how long something takes. Time, which is measured in either frames or seconds. For example, how long you look at your cards or how long your smile lasts on your face. You can check your cards twice in a hand, which would be frequency, and each card check can last a different amount of time. So let's say 1.1 and 2 seconds respectively. This would be the combination of frequency and duration. Measuring frequency and duration are both very time sensitive tasks, but they are relatively simple. It starts to get difficult when you try to articulate the frequency at which someone plays with their chips. How do you define play with their chips? Does it include shuffling the chips, doing a coin roll, tossing them around? There are a lot of ways to define chip playing. Let's say a player tends to roll the chips on their finger when they are strong. If you were to label all the chip plays the same, you would miss that data. This is why descriptions or operational definitions of behavior, which are qualitative in nature, are so important and why you really need to combine qualitative and quantitative methods to understand the whole picture. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that it really is easy to determine the frequency of certain things at the table, but when it comes to some behaviors, you will need to really be careful on how you label them. This is where what I call style comes in. Labeling the style of a behavior is designed to decrease the subjective nature of behavior at the table. So chip playing becomes chip fidgeting, chip rolling, chip tapping, chip touching, chip shuffling, all of which have video examples and descriptions of what those styles actually mean. Instead of saying a player played with their chips, we say the player exhibited a chip roll lasting 3.5 seconds. The goal of behavioral coding is to measure behavior consistently in order to perform behavioral analysis. This is why descriptions of behavior are so important. Information is often lost in language. So once again, operationally defining movement is very important in order to have consistency. Now here is the really cool thing. Once you have these accurate behavioral descriptions, you need to find out if they actually mean something. To do this, we created a massive database to input all the contextual action of the game what everyone has at all times, what the board texture is, stack size, bet amounts, everything. It's sort of like a poker tracker or hold a manager, which are essentially databases for online hand histories. The only difference is we can input behavioral information alongside contextual information. This allows us to conduct pretty much every kind of analysis and most importantly, find where the behaviors we are looking for exist in our example. So I can, in a couple of seconds, display all the times everyone in our sample has aces or kings, and then go over those amounts looking for differences, or compare the average card check of the top 10% of hands to the bottom 10% across a specific sample within our data set. So some of you might be asking, you know, what's more valuable, frequency, duration, or style? Now here's the thing. Looking at stats in a database makes you go, wow, this is interesting. But sitting down and watching every single moment of every single video over the course of a year gives you a level of insight that I would never trade for raw data. Remember, the primary goal of Beyond Tells was to create a product, and I can say with confidence that the majority of insights came from more casual observations of behavior. 
I'm not just some researcher studying poker. I'm a player and a very practical person. When playing poker, you aren't going to have the ability to speed up, slow down, and count everything that happens. The true benefits of behavioral coding was the realization that the poker community has no intelligent way of discussing behavior at the poker table. Advancements in poker come from language. I can say I was the short stack and my opponent was three betting very light, so I shoved, and you can get an understanding of what is going on. When behavior is described, what is written and passed on as advice is often honestly embarrassing. Expanding your behavioral language and improving your ability to identify behavioral information and tells the table is really about establishing a system for understanding, remembering, and using nonverbal information at the table. And I'm really not trying to plug our own product, but that is exactly what the Beyond Tells training is all about. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this little glimpse into our world of behavioral information, poker tales, and analysis. Our coding and analysis are far from done, and it is something that is always ongoing. Currently, all of this is done manually, meaning it requires someone to actually sit down and code all of the information. I am also going to eventually publish our behavioral coding guidelines, so if you are crazy enough, you can do your own research. My other company, The Nonverbal Group, is working on creating technology that does this automatically. So soon, I hope to truly speed up this process. If you have any questions or comments, or you know, you're in a similar field or conducting research on behavior, I would love to help you out in any way I can. Between my work at Beyond Tells and the research at The Nonverbal Group, I have a truly extensive amount of ways you can record and break down behavior, and this really is just a small portion of what is possible. Reach out, Blake at BeyondTales.com. Thanks again.